January is quickly wrapping up. February is right around the corner, which means that new Nintendo Switch games are coming out. But what Nintendo Switch games should you have on your radar for the month of February? Well, that's where I come into play. At the end of every month, I like to take a look at the upcoming games for the next month. So if you're into stuff like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And without any further ado, let's jump into the best upcoming Switch games for the month of February 2020. On February 4th, we have our first game coming out, the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics. Now, the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics is based on the Netflix show of the same name, well, minus the tactics part, and it's a collaboration effort between Netflix and the Jim Henson Company, which is actually a prequel of the 1982 movie, The Dark Crystal. In this game, you lead a group of Gelfing against their oppressive overlords called the Skeesis in a turn-based tactics strategy RPG game. You meet and recruit new characters along the way, with some of them being new, some of them being from the show, and some of them being from the movie. And then you get them to join you by giving them jobs and modifying their abilities in battle. Since this game is a strategy RPG, you have to do things like look to your environment and terrain to win battles, and there are over 50 battles in the game that you compete in. One thing that really stands out in this game for me is the art style of the game. I really like the way the characters are animated and the way the environments look as well, and the moves look pretty flashy too. Obviously there's a lot of RPGs to choose from on the Nintendo Switch, but the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics might have enough oomph with the art style and the Jim Henson Company backing to make it stand out when it hits the Nintendo Switch on February 4th. On February 6th, we have Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth. Now, this is a game that I honestly won't play, but I did want to mention it just in case you are into these types of games. Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth is an Otomi visual novel game, meaning that it has a female lead protagonist. Yes, I had to look up the meaning of Otomi, but hey, I go the extra mile here on the channel for you guys. You play as a girl named Cardia who is waiting for her father's return and she's basically alone in this mansion due to a poison in her body that will melt anything that she touches, kind of like a Midas touch. After a botched kidnapped attempting by the royal guard, a gentleman thief named Arsene Lupin links up with her and together they set out to find her father and basically see what's going on with him. Now this game is a visual novel style game, so there's a lot of dialogue, a lot of anime style artwork and multiple paths and endings for the game. It originally released on the PS4 and the PS Vita and seems to have somewhat of a dedicated fan base, so I thought I'd let Switch owners know that they can pick up Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth on February 6th. Next up on February 14th, we have Darksiders Genesis, which I think could be a real big hit on the Nintendo Switch. Darksiders 1 and 2 are fantastic action games with light puzzle and RPG elements on the Nintendo Switch. But don't let the name of this game fool you, Darksider Genesis isn't anything like those other two games. Instead, Darksider Genesis goes a different route, with a Diablo style hack and slash gameplay to it. Players choose between two different characters, one named Strife and one named War, each with different abilities and you can switch between them on the fly. Strife uses pistols to battle, while War uses a sword. War and sword kind of rhyme, but makes it kind of hard to say. Your characters get things like upgrades, weapon abilities, and items to keep the game fresh throughout playing, and you can even link up with someone via local or online co-op, and you basically pick between Strife or War to play as during your time playing online. It might be very different than the previous Darksider games, but the game is already released on Steam and seems to be getting pretty good reviews. The developers of the game did say that no content would be cut from the Nintendo Switch version of the game compared to the PS4 and Xbox One, which is another good thing. Darksider Genesis will rip your heart out on February 14th, which also happens to be Valentine's Day. Now this next game I literally have nothing to say about other than the fact that it has the most bizarre name for a video game ever. Under Night In Birth EXE Late CL-R I want to know how they decided on the name of this game, because it, it really, it, yeah, yeah. It's an anime 2D style fighting game that's based on a Japanese arcade fighter that was pretty popular, and it has some improvements made to it, including new characters, so if you like what you see in the gameplay of this, maybe Undernight in Birth EXE Late CL-R is a game that you will want to check out on February 20th. Once again, the name of the game is Under Night In Birth EXE Late CL-R. You can't, you can't make this stuff up, folks. 
On February 20th, we have another game that a lot of people are looking forward to, and that is Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition. While Dante might not be in Smash Brothers yet, another Devil May Cry game is indeed heading to the Nintendo Switch with some improvements being made, as Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition hits the Nintendo Switch also on February 20th. Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition takes place before the events of the original Devil May Cry game, and has Dante going up against his twin brother Virgil. The game offers different combat styles that you can utilize in the game, but the Nintendo Switch version of the game actually has a feature to switch these styles on the fly instead of at a designated area, making this an exclusive thing for the Nintendo Switch version of the game. The Special Edition also includes all of the content added into the original Special Edition release, such as the ability to play as Virgil. The developers of the game have also teased that there's going to be more included stuff in the Nintendo Switch version of the game that has not been revealed yet, but judging by what's already been revealed, I think it's going to be some pretty cool stuff. If you pre-order the game now, you can actually get 50% off the other two Devil May Cry games that have released on the Nintendo Switch. I really enjoyed the port of Devil May Cry 1 on the Switch, and considering that Devil May Cry 3 is going to have additional Switch-specific features, this seems like a no-brainer to pick up at $20 when it drops on February 20th. The next game is definitely my most anticipated game for the month of February, it comes out on February 25th, and that is Samurai Showdown. Although Samurai Showdown has already released for the Nintendo Switch in Japan, the US version of the game is finally coming on February 25th. I absolutely love the first two Samurai Showdown games, as SNK didn't really try to make a Street Fighter clone or a Mortal Kombat clone which was popular to do at that time, instead making a more strategic fighting game. Now this game originally released on the PS4 in 2019, and Samurai Showdown comes to the Nintendo Switch with the same 60 frames per second gameplay that the PS4 version offered, although with a slight drop in graphics which is to be expected. If you purchase the digital version of Samurai Showdown, you actually get Samurai Showdown 2, which released on the Neo Geo Pocket Color, which means technically you have a Neo Geo Pocket Color game on your Nintendo Switch, making it the first of its kind. If you get the game physically, you can also get a cool skin for your dog bone controller as well. I'm kind of on the fence on which way I'm going to purchase the game, honestly, but one thing is for sure, Samurai Showdown is a must buy for me on January 25th, and I'll see your ass online, and hopefully I'll kick your ass. Another game coming out on February 25th is probably a game you wouldn't think I would be into, but it's Two Point Hospital. Two Point Hospital will have you feeling like a surgeon, cutting for the very first time when it hits the Nintendo Switch on February 25th. I low-key like games like Theme Park and Theme Hospital, and Two Point Hospital is a long-awaited successor to Theme Hospital. You are basically tasked with building up a hospital and making it not suck, making sure people don't die, and making sure the hospital is running well. Like the theme-based games before it, Twin Points Hospital doesn't take itself seriously from a healthcare standpoint, as there's lots of slapstick stuff that you can implement into your hospital while trying to keep the workers happy and from rioting. I honestly hope the Nintendo Switch version of the game turns out well, because I can see myself sinking a lot of time into it. Two Point Hospital comes out on February 25th, and hopefully we can see something like Two Point Park be announced thereafter. We have one more game coming out on February 25th that lots of people are excited for, and that of course is the Mega Man Zero slash ZX Legacy Collection. Capcom loves their Mega Man collections, and the next entry is the Mega Man Zero ZX Legacy Collection, coming to the Nintendo Switch on February 25th. This collection consists of six games, Mega Man Zero, Mega Man Zero One. This collection consists of six games, Mega Man Zero One, Mega Man Zero Two, Mega Man Zero Three, Mega Man Zero Four, as well as Mega Man ZX and Mega Man ZX Advent. The gameplay in these games is a bit different than your standard Mega Man games, but that's why people fell in love with these games when they were originally released on handhelds. Capcom has included some new things into this version of the game, such as a casual scenario mode if things get a bit too tough, and a save assist as well. As usual, Capcom has done a bunch of additional stuff with the six games in this package, such as additional artwork and various promotional materials that you can check out in the game's museum. Thankfully, unlike other Mega Man collections on the Nintendo Switch, everything is available on the cartridge with no additional download needed if you decide to go physical with this game when it releases on February 25th. Do you like runes? Do you like factories? Well then, February 28th should be a date that you have circled on your calendar as Rune Factory 4 Special comes to the Nintendo Switch. 
While the Harvest Moon series kind of lost some of its luster for me, I always enjoyed the Rune Factory games as they incorporated lots of elements of the original Harvest Moon games but with a deeper story and a battling system. Now, Rune Factory 4 originally released on the 3DS, and while Japan got Rune Factory 4 Special in 2019 for the Switch, the game is finally coming stateside on February 28th. Rune Factory 4 Special has you doing all of the traditional things you do in a Rune Factory game. You harvest crops, you explore dungeons, battle monsters, and try and get married, and much more. While I may never get married in real life, at least I can do it in Rune Factory 4 Special. The graphics have been cleaned up for the Nintendo Switch version of the game, and include things like new artwork for this version of the game as well. It might not really be a game for everyone, but I know that a lot of people are excited for Rune Factory 4 Special on the Nintendo Switch, and your time is nearly here. The final game for the month of February might be the most interesting related game to come to the Nintendo Switch in quite a while, and that is Metro Redo, which comes out on February 28th. A late addition to this list and somewhat of a surprise announcement, Metro Redo is now officially confirmed for the Nintendo Switch and is coming out on February 28th. Now, Metro Redo consists of two Metro games, Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light. While the original versions of these games came to systems like the Xbox 360, the Redo versions only came out on the PS4 and Xbox One and consisted of all of the game's DLC and improved graphics. While we'll have to wait to see just how good the Nintendo Switch version of the game looks, the Switch version of this compilation does include all the DLC content, and shockingly, the entire collection is fitted onto a cartridge, with no additional download required. The two games here are very story-driven first-person shooter games with lots of horror elements, taking place in a Russian apocalypse, with tons of different creatures and mutants to fight in a subway system. I'm very interested to see how the Nintendo Switch version of these ports turns out, because I think gritty first-person shooter games like this deserve a spot on the console. I'll be snagging Metro Redo on February 28th to review it for you guys, and hopefully I will be impressed. Alright, so those are some of the best upcoming Nintendo Switch games for the month of February 2020. Now I want to know in the comments section down below what games you guys are looking forward to. Obviously, there's some bigger stuff on here. Games like Metro Redo and Samurai Showdown definitely sort of lead this list for me, but there's also some smaller games on here as well that you might be interested in. And plus, we learned about the game with the weirdest name ever ever so let me know in the comments section down below what games you guys are looking forward to and as always thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications be sure to check out the pinned comment in the comment section down below if you want to check out things like my 32x book pick up some rgt merch or follow me on various forms of social media and as always i'll catch you guys on the next episode later